live? Oh, we are? hey. hey. Okay, hey, everybody. We we're live. live? Yeah. Hey. Great. Okay, well, usually we have the little intro spinny thing. What happened to that? Okay, well, welcome, everybody, to Five Boys in a Business podcast. Uh, we're back Monday for podcast. You are? We are here. A little bit later than normal, but we're still here nonetheless. Um, everybody check us out on all the podcast channels. Why are you laughing at me? Because you're making me forget things. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. All the podcast channels. YouTube. iTunes. Spotify. Google Podcasts. Okay. And so we're here every Monday around 1030. Also, don't forget to check out the merch store at ASVCmerch.com. So we have special guest this week, Terry Russell. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So Terry is. An, why are you laughing at me? Because I'm saying I'm everything. Richie King. Oh, I'm Emily King. Oh, intro. <laughs> so I said, who am I? <laughs> Good. Okay. So because um, I'm supposed to say who we are oh, okay. in the beginning of the podcast, okay. and so we're out of our our Elements, routine sorry. a little bit. So gotcha. Monday I, I have that effect on people. So ah, yeah. So um, now we can introduce Terry. Yeah. Terry. So Terry Russell, who's an employee here at All Star Veterinary Clinic. But who we've known for a very long time outside of the clinic. Yes. Terry has a uh, Bachelor of Arts degree. Is that right? From uh, Marion University? Or yes. Or is it a BS? It's a BA? It's Marion University, yeah. Marion University. Yeah, sure. Back in the day when it was Marion College. Yes. Yes. So all you Marion Knights out there. Yeah. Do you know the fight song? Go Knights. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a very short song. I don't know. It's really short, yeah. So. Back uh, in the day, it was really short. Um, and a degree in teaching. Yeah. Is that correct? Well, no, it's not in teaching. My major was in fashion merchandising and business administration and originally. Then, um, and I got a certification in That's teaching. what it was. Okay. Yes. Got you. Yeah. So um, what year was that? Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Harrison, when did I tell you about that? <laughs> never ask a lady your age. So never ask a lady when she graduated. We're the same age. She graduated so early. It's I know. Yeah. It's exactly. Come on. Come on. 80, no, I graduated in 91. So high school. High, high, school, high school in 87. So tell everybody your job here at the clinic. Um, so I am the reception and um, greeter. I mm -hmm. work in reception and greeting, um, but I also work in the education program, um, right. the new education program here at All Star. So I'm super excited about that. So last year, one of the goals was to get a program started for education. Right. And we came across the This Is How We Roll program. With Purdue University. With Purdue University. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. tell everybody a little bit about, because that's something that I think as a group collectively we're excited about you know yeah. in regards to what that can mean for the potential for the community yeah so yeah. tell everybody a little bit about what the program is and what we're hoping to do okay so dr dudley um graduated from purdue and so she is the one that kind of found it and um researched it and then together we went to purdue to kind of meet with um dr son sandra mcgill um who put together the program so she um met with different teachers and built this curriculum um, and it, it is all common core curriculum so it can be used in a classroom so it meets the state standards so if you wanted to use a piece of the curriculum and there's probably 60 maybe um, different curriculums mm -hmm. um, for um, vet education so large animals small animals um, teeth dental um, just a variety of different units um, and then they are geared towards different ages so most of the units are geared towards kindergarten or preschool through fourth grade but there are units that you can kind of take that and dr dudley has added to that and we've used it for girls and boys that have come in that are mm -hmm. sophomores in high school and we've just taken that curriculum and dr dudley has added to it um, with her experience and her knowledge and we've made it geared towards um, somebody in 12th grade a sophomore in high school so um, it is um, just teaching veterinary medicine and animal care um, and getting kids that are kind of maybe excited about that career and vet be becoming a veterinarian or even a vet tech or vet surgeon and um, there's so many different avenues to go yeah. through um, animal dermatology there's just so many different um, types of um, vet medicine veterinarian medicine that you can get into and it kind of helps the kiddos get have fun with it so do on hand um, hands-on projects um, suturing um, bandaging um, we have um, first united methodist preschool coming in this month and next month with their preschoolers and we're doing the unit on dentists because it's february it's dental month um, so we're having um we're having them come in and we're going to talk about animal um animals that have um that go to the dentist so like 
the book that we have is called um, Donkeys Needs Dentists Too. Mm. And it's really cute and it's at their level and it teaches right. them that, you know, all animals need it. How do, how do doctors take care of um, animals in comparison to how we take care of you when you go to the dentist? So what's mm. different about it? Um, obviously, you can't, some animals you can't just open their mouth and look inside. Well, actually, some children you can't either, <laughs> right. to be honest. Um, but it kind of <clears throat> teaches the kiddos um, how important it is. And then what the animals eat also affects what happens with their teeth. And that's, you know, kind of what happens with kiddos. So, so hmm. what is it about teaching that made you want to pursue that when you were, you know, you had mentioned, okay, I got a degree in this at, you know, Marion College and then transfer you know I like transferred that knowledge and then decided okay I'm gonna get my certification in teaching what was it about that or that field that drew you to it like what about it do about you like? teaching yeah oh so I think it was after I had kiddos and um after I had my first child and I realized um how passionate I was about being around kiddos um and I loved watching them learn like watching just my son just in, in you know his development just watching him learn and seeing that I did that like I showed him how to do that I taught him that and I can take that out and you know teach other you know kiddos so I thought I'd try it um and I loved it um I think you you I think you're the, you're just your heart fills up you know when it's something you're passionate about right and when it becomes less of a job and more of um Something, I used to call it a ministry when I worked at the Catholic Church because for right. me it was it was truly just a ministry to go every day and so I felt like when you find something like that that it doesn't matter to you what your income is but that you're happy and you can't wait to get to work that's the feeling that I felt when I went to school every day hmm. um, and I had that feeling when I started here um, I loved coming in because I loved the people, but I was like, where's my niche? You know, what am I good right. at? Yeah, I can open the doors, and I'm, I'm, I am good at that, but what what can I find another niche? And then when Dr. Dudley was talking about this program that they had, I mean, it totally sparked an interest in me, and I, I, yeah, I have just totally – I mean, honestly, I think I, I work on it almost every day now. I just I just get excited about it, and I'm constantly, like, doing lesson plans, like when I was teaching and right. pulling up new things and um, finding what's current and what's relevant right now. So what can we do? And working here and seeing the different things that happen and listening to the doctors, um, just different um, situations that come in, like a dog eating baby Jesus uh, <laughs> From, I mean, that happens. Or baby so, Jesus dog. <laughs> you know, I mean, when things like that happen, then I want to, I want to like, okay, how can I use that? How can I, you know, everything that, every little situation that comes in, um, even um, new puppies in that experience, or even, you know, a euthanasia, um, something sad. How can I, what can I teach the kiddos? What, how can I use that experience that that client just had and made that a better, you know, what could make right. that a better experience? So, um, education. So, yeah. educating. And, and we think about, the clients as the big people, but the little people that come in, they're Our clients, clients too. too. Yeah, yeah, And absolutely. when they're happy when they come in or when they see us outside of um, the clinic and they recognize us, um, that's that's yummy. I, I love that feeling. Like right. when I would be at Walmart or Meyer and the kids would see me and they'd be like, Mrs. Russell, what are you doing here? Right. <laughs> you know, and they're gonna, they're gonna, they have that same feeling when they see a doctor, you know, right. out of their scrubs and they're right. like, Dr. King, right? Why are you here? You know, I love that. Like, yes, that's, that's just so cool. <laughs> I thought you never left the clinic. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I don't. <laughs> I thought you lived there. Yeah. No. Sometimes we feel like we do. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. No, that is so true. And the kids, um, I can't, I think it was my boss up in South Bend who I learned a lot from in regards to different components of working and the practice and whatnot. Um, and um, he did that with kids. Mm. That was one of his things was that he involved the kids in the exam room experience because it is furthering the human animal bond for that person, for that child. You right. know what I mean? As well as then the mother seeing the advantage or the father seeing the advantage of the child being engaged, you yeah. know, um, with their pet, or, you know, with their dog or their cat. And so, yeah, no, I mean, I completely agree. It definitely is more fun. It makes the. It, it, you know, when you're young as a veterinarian and you're just trying to figure things out, yeah. you know, it's um, it's adding another thing to your plate. I can but I that, think yeah. that as you grow up and you're you become more and more comfortable and 
you know, to some degree your purpose shifts or becomes more involved, you know, then mm-hmm. you start to see the advantage of, you know, doing those types of things. Yeah, I can see that. So. I can see that here too. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun thing to do or to, you know, when you put a stethoscope on a kid and they haven't heard, you know, a heartbeat before, you right. know, but they know what it's for, you know what I mean? And then to see their eyes, you know, when they start, when they find it and they'll tell you, you can always tell when they can't hear it because they're like, nope. no, 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 <laughs> I, I think I do. And they're like, nah, they don't hear it. And then they hear it and they're like, oh, I hear it. You know I yeah. mean? It's just like their eyes just light up, yeah. you know, in yeah. terms of experiencing something or being exposed to something different or new yeah we did a germ unit with um a group of um girl scouts um lat like two weeks ago and we talked about germs and i'm sure they all wash their hands um but it's germ season and dr dudley did a unit on that and we did we did a black light to see we had them all wash their hands there were 16 of them here so wow. we were hogging the bathroom <laughs> But they all washed their hands, and we had this gel on there, and they were supposed to wash the gel off. And it was amazing when they came back, like how much the gel how was much remaining. The gel was still on right. their hands, and Dr. Dudley was cool. She showed them like how to put how you put on your um, surgeon gowns, and that we that you have to wear a protective mm-hmm. hat, and then ask integrate inner talks with them, and why do you think we wear this? Why do you think we have to do this? And um, then she had one of the moms put on the gown too. Right. Um, it was just, yeah, it, it, it's, cool. it's cool. It's totally cool to see. Well, I think it definitely exposes kids and families to, you know, veterinary medicine and what veterinary medicine is supposed to be. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that there are opportunities to see veterinary medicine practiced in an, you know, maybe incorrect. And I don't know if that's the word, but, you know, less a different than I, way, less, than, less ideal. than ideal <laughs> way, like Dr. Pohl or something mm-hmm. like that. And that's, although that's entertaining, is not an ideal way to. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know practice veterinary medicine and so having the kids come through and they see you know what is it you know about you know surgery you know why is it different here maybe versus someplace else versus you know what i mean kind of a thing i think that's really a big advantage for them so yeah oh yeah definitely Definitely. um what do you think um like with the this is how we roll program what do you see transpiring like what are our what do you think I mean I kind of know but like share with yeah, everybody so you know what maybe some of the future objectives or tell them how you're servicing people right now so maybe right now um, if if people are interested um, ages if they're interest truly interested in a veterinary veterinarian um, career um, they can come in shadow uh, the high school students obviously can stay a little bit longer um, and then younger kiddos and um, we only start at age I think 12 and up Mm -hmm. and so they can come and shadow for a couple hours with the doctor to see if it's something they're interested in we might do a unit from this is how we roll or they might watch a surgery Mm -hmm. Um, um, we are limited on how many of those we can do um, because we um, have to get it in between uh, the doctor's schedule but um, we are um, going to different um, preschools Preschools so we'll go out to the community um, and go to different preschools and bring the units there um, we also have preschools come here and um, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts that come in and um, they get a tour and they get to do a unit um, based on whatever theme we might be working on. Like, again, February is dental month. I think next month is, um, we're talking about asthma. And I didn't realize, but um, they have like an asthma inhaler for horses. Oh, yeah. 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 And so, dogs, too. Yeah. yeah. I haven't, I haven't mm. gotten my hands on the, do- the the horse one to kind of see what it looks like. Um, but we have pictures of it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's great because kiddos that have asthma will yes. see that and just right. relate to it. We have um, we have one um, that is Dachshunds Get Diabetes, too. And so I would love to kind of explore that a little bit more because mm. I'm sure that's something um, children and adults with diabetes would love to kind of re- yeah. they could relate to it especially if somebody gets diagnosed so young and you know to see the diagnosis right. um with their how dachshunds are um treated, treated and with diabetes and i think that yeah. would be cool so that's kind of the things we're doing here currently it is still kind of new but um my my hope is that we can lead to some summer camps um mm. for kiddos uh some christmas camps um where we open it up to um ages eight and up and you know, allow them to come in and, and really, you know, spend a couple of days, not overnight, um, but um, <laughs> with some bumps in the back. No, right. overnight. no overnights. <laughs> Richie's cooking no breakfast. Right. <laughs> but it, it is geared towards that, towards a um, 
towards a camp that you know would be a longer camp a day camp maybe um but there's enough um, curriculum there and Mm -hmm. uh, and of course you have enough doctors here um Mm -hmm. that could add to that curriculum so i know dr dudley is currently the only doctor that uh, and you Mm -hmm. um but um I know the other ones are interested as well, so I think we'll get we'll get more doctors to kind of come on board and be a part of it and want to do with it. But that's that I would love to see it become a day camp, you know, um, yeah. in the summer, um, in the winter, like those two weeks right. of Christmas break or spring break when not everybody goes away. My yeah. kids always used to say we're the only people in Noblesville, Indiana. Everybody else <laughs> went away. <laughs> that's what our kids used to say every do. time. We I'm never like, go anywhere. We, we anywhere. kind of do, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they used to, so the, for those kids that whose parents won't let them go anywhere, then there would be a camp. So yep. that would be my that I hope that 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 I can see that happen. Sure, um, I think it would be cool. I think it would be really cool to make it a a camp. Yeah, no, I think that would be a really neat way to, you know, affect the community. You know, the one of the thoughts behind the clinic is always like, okay, what footprint are you leaving behind? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So how can you make an impact? Um, and sure, practicing good quality, high quality medicine, you know, everybody's trying to meet that objective, but what other things, you know, are we trying to do to make a difference in the community? And so that's why that was, the program was so interesting to me because I feel like we can impact so many more lives, you know what I mean? Oh, in yeah. terms of having some type of good experience with veterinary medicine. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I could. I was telling Richie last night, I was like, uh, it could become whatever we want. So do you want it to become like its yeah. own thing? Kapoom. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> or yeah. are you know, are we holding the reins back? What are we doing? You know, mm-hmm. uh, when we were uh, brainstorming last night um, and uh, it's, yeah, cause it's one, nobody's doing it and two, there's a need for it yeah you know yeah. and um it yeah it has the potential to you know change a lot of people's lives it in does terms of what they're yeah. exposed to and then what options they might consider open for themselves it does we are we are lucky that hamilton county has a great 4-h program mm-hmm. uh, my kids were a part of it i don't know if yours were but my kids really love the 4-h program and that's great in the summer but then um sometimes there's not a whole lot to do the other months at least that was our experience mm-hmm. um and so I think this would give that uh, that opportunity in December and um, other months to kind of get that veterinarian care and education out there out a little there. bit more. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, um, okay, so we have to digress now. So we mentioned that you worked at the church, mm-hmm. and yes. so you were a preschool teacher at the yes. church. Well, yes. you director. ran the preschool. Yeah, you were director. director. Of the preschool program. Um, and so then, therefore, <laughs> you knew our children. Yes. Very well. Sometimes too well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Starting so. with Harrison, your oldest. Yes. Who played Jesus. Played Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Harrison, how was your experience playing Jesus? Mm-hmm. He was a good Jesus. Harrison, they said you were a good Jesus. How did you feel about that? Join in, Harrison. I remember being very embarrassed about being shirtless, so I tried flexing oh. my abs the entire time <laughs> I was up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've not heard that story. I, I have lots of pictures of um, Harrison as Jesus, and I'm happy to share with those. Because oh I got I got up there, and they're like, he's oh. being crucified now. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Because that's what Jesus was thinking when he was on the yeah. cross. Was got to show those abs. Oh my God! He did a great job. And Harrison was always, and I've said this to you guys before, but he was always that kiddo in school that held the door. And right. that's what I remember about him, mm-hmm. because that was very important to me that the doors were held. You yeah. know, when people was where people were coming sure. through, and it used to just drive me crazy when people would just let a door fall on a friend. Right. And Harrison would always go run to the top and hold the door. I remember that specifically oh, wow. about him. He was a great door holder. Great job, Harrison. Great job, and then, Harrison. And then during that Jesus thing, I remember when they put the white cover over me and, like, he's dead, but, like, I couldn't hold my breath for long enough, so I'm like... <sighs> <laughs> like he's he's dead, but yet he's breathing. Yeah. Well, that's all right. He does he did get a great job. Resurrection came early. Resurrection, yes. that's right, exactly. He did a great job. That's what I remember about Harrison now. I was also the cross bear. Yes, you oh, were. Yeah, you were. In church. About yeah, you were. You had Trevor, Holden, and Johnny. Yeah, I didn't get Calvin. Nope. No. Um, but I did spend some time with him one time. Um, I got to come over and spend some time with him, so I did. I almost lost him. He, he was a, he's like a, he's like um, an They're escapee. ninjas. Yeah, they, like, he's... disappear, and you they don't over, mind that's not being we near us. That's when we were at that thing Hunting. in Southern Indiana, yeah. Yeah. And I remember I came up, and you were there. I remember I pulled up, because yeah. that was your prom, junior prom. Yes. I came back to, to take mm-hmm. pictures. Mm-hmm. So I ran by the house, 
And um, I don't think we had the driveway done at that point. It was a circle drive. Yeah, yeah. turn on drive. And I remember I pulled up and just this door opens and then Her- Calvin comes tearing out the front door. Didn't stop at the step, no, just blah, 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 in no. a diaper, you know, long hair. I'm like, I thought I could do this. Where is he? <laughs> yeah, and he got always... in the front seat of a car and I'm like... <laughs> Oh That's not going to work. We had a story. Actually, he was, didn't have the ring doorbell at that time. Right, exactly. When he was little, I was standing in the kitchen right there, and, and I, he walked around the corner, and I'm thinking, he's standing in the hallway, the foyer. And then a couple minutes later, Emily's sister comes yeah, running. Missy comes, Missy comes running here, holding Calvin, goes, what is going on around here? He had gone out the front door and standing next to the mailbox, this, like, two-year-old kid or whatever. He, remember, though, we had to we had to rope tie the, the doors because he could open the doors, and we wouldn't know he left. Right. So we used to – do you remember that, Harrison? We would tie the doors together yeah. so that he couldn't go outside. Oh, outside. The, the sliding glass door. But yep, he, doesn't, did he didn't leave the front porch. Like, yeah. you know, or the front yard. Yeah. He was, I mean, he just wanted some air. Wants some air. <laughs> just wants some air. He wants some breathing Meanwhile, space. if somebody asked him who he is, he couldn't talk to tell them. No, he's like, I just <laughs> have a speaking I have caveman mama. over there. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. But I've seen him a lot since I've worked here. Oh, and yeah. And he's a door, great dancer. I mean. He loves to dance. Yeah. He has a... He has a uh, all the boys, and, and I, I suppose that you would assume this, but I didn't really assume it or realize it until I had my own, was that they're all similar but all very, very different. Oh, yeah. And their personalities, what you know, motivates them, what they find humorous. Yeah. Um, and they're all, you know, Holden is very different from Trevor, very different from Johnny. Yeah. Um, but they all tell, have wonderful stories to tell. So. Tell everybody oh. your favorite story about Holden. Oh. Is that the mm-hmm. – yes. so. So Holden, <laughs> Holden was in preschool, but maybe what skin? four? Yeah, he was he was a beginner, so he was probably three or four. Right. Um, and Trevor was maybe a year older, but um, yeah. So my office was in the hallway, so my right. back was to the students because I was talking, but they were all coming down, so I was kind of looking down the hallway just to make sure everybody's coming in, okay, everybody's safe. And the kids are walking by, and I'm talking to somebody inside the office, and all of a sudden I feel this big swat on my backside <laughs> it caught me off guard because it was a pretty whoosh, it was a it was a strong swat for so I thought I felt like it was somebody a big person and right. it was like so I turned around and he's just like waves at me like hey <laughs> hey girl Holden's waving. hey girl I'm like okay so I'm like waved back and I was like okay now I have to go in there and explain to him you know you don't hit ladies on the tushkis <laughs> So it's awkward. Unless you, don't want to, unless you want to go to jail. Yeah. So I went in and um, I called him over and I said, hey, come on out here. I want to talk to you. And I said, good morning. And he's like, good morning. And I'm like, you know, I'm so glad you're here. I'm excited that you're at school. And I know you were just saying good morning to me, but I just want to let you know you should never touch somebody's bottom. That's considered a private area. <laughs> and um, this morning when you walked by, you gave me a little swat on the bottom. And we just we just don't do that at school. And he goes, oh, well, we do that at our house. Right. <laughs> He Did he really that. say that? Yeah, we do I'm that sure at our house. Because sure. we hit each, I hit everybody on the yeah, butt. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, and, and that's why I was laughing because it's so true. Because even now, what what do you got? It's, it's probably, over there. It's probably is, is that you, Harry? No, going off? no, that's me. That's you. Yeah, just hit stop. <laughs> And everybody Sorry, here Harrison. goes. Yeah, you hit everybody on the butt. You hit Harrison on the butt all the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like. I do. And they're like, the, Dudley was like, yeah, you do. This is when we were having the conversation uh, about who likes hugs, who doesn't like oh, hugs. Right. And so like Dudley and Fausty are like non-hug people. And so we were laughing and I was like, well, I'll just hit you on the butt then. And they're like, you hit everybody else on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so apparently we must have been doing that. Oh, for, it was, yeah. But I had to do it. I mean, I, I didn't care, course. but I just, I no, had to absolutely. because everybody saw it. And Oh no, um, then you'd have about. I don't know, mm-hmm. 200 students hitting you on the butt every day. But then I remember <laughs> I had to call you. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay, so now I have to call a parent um, and tell her that I had to pull her child out and correct him. and For hitting, <laughs> hitting me on the butt. butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you gosh. Were, it, was, it was fine, but yeah. If you don't hold him, you're not surprised by that. That was my holding story, but yeah. Yeah, that's too funny. He's uh, he's sweetie, too. All your, all, all your boys are That's sweet. very nice. Good boys. Good you boys. have two kids. I do. I Jack do. and Maddie. Jack and Maddie. Both are married. It's hard um, to believe. Jack is married to Emily, and they have. I have a grandchild. What? Um, Jackson, he's six months old. He's amazing. I can't wait for you guys to enjoy that. Harrison and Madeline. I know. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Harrison's like, oh, Jesus, I need to get the what, house. What's first. it like? <laughs> what's it like crossing that Rubicon from being just a parent to a grandparent? So, is it okay. something you have to wrap your mind around, or it, is it? You do because. I remember when Emily first became pregnant, everybody's like, oh, 
it's like something you can't explain. Sure. And I'm like, well, I love my kids so much. I love my husband so much. I love my family. I mean, really, right. is it much different? Because I don't know. It couldn't be any better right. than having a kiddo, you know? Right. But it is. It's, it's, you know that the child didn't come from you, but it's still a part of you. Right. Um, right. And it's just, I don't know. It's just um, uh, the most yummy Right. Just call it yummy, like Justin Bieber's new song, Yummy. There's a little plug for Justin. I know, not no, a lot Harrison, of Justin you don't like Bieber that song. fans. Plugs for the Biebs. <sighs> Whatever. No, it is funny, though. I think that as I get older, I know I start thinking more about legacy and the legacy you leave behind. And uh, there was a Christmas card we got this uh, this Christmas of um, the Callahan's. Callahan's. Yeah. And it was it was Donna Callahan, um, and who is Betsy's, Emily's sister's mother in law. Okay. And all the people around her. And mm-hmm. I thought it's fascinating to see that. You see, everything came from you guys. Yeah. This entire group of people. I mean, right. and, you know, you think about that legacy that you leave behind and the memories that you have generationally to say, oh, well, this person, you know, like the influence that might say my grandparents had on me, but they've been gone for years. But then I will then take those values and things that I learned and pass them on to my kids. So that kind of, um, um, skipping is the wrong word, but that kind of transferred legacy, transferred True. value, transfer, you know, and how everything it's not genetic. That's that's too strong. But just to say the things that you learn and things it you isn't. pass on. It's true. It's not genetic because if if Jackson was adopted, I would sure. have this. I would because I think the greatest moment was. Um, it's still like if I look at pictures of it, it chokes me up. But when Jack, when Jack held Jackson for the first time, sure, yeah, like watching your son, right, or your daughter love something that much right. and sure. you're like you they love their they love their wife they love their spouse but then seeing them like i mean even when madeline and luke got married watching them give their vows we get emotional because we're realizing that they love something bigger and greater than themselves and sure all right when jack was holding that baby for jackson for the first time and you see that you see that love right and you know that you had a part of teaching him yeah. how to sure. love right it is it's just it is just it's powerful. It's, it's just so. We were. Th- I was. Th- I don't know why I was thinking about this. It was in the context of something else with Harrison. But I remember thinking. I remember when I found out Emily was expecting Harrison, and thinking I didn't sleep that night. I didn't because mm-hmm. you're so nervous. And it, it's. It's. I think you're nervous because, or I know that I was because you know in your gut the weight. I mean, the, this responsibility right. that you've got. This is the next step, yeah. and you're 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 ready to take the next step. But um, kind of the collective weight and the responsibility that you have with that. So it's interesting to see as you create that kind of fanned out legacy, how that responsibility expands. And yeah. um, I mean, maybe not as much in terms of Stark having, you know, going from being not a parent to a parent, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah. And the other cool part is when they cry, you just give them to their mom. <laughs> and you're like, I she got said that. To she go. goes, feed them and get rid of them. I got to go. Yes. Oh, couldn't. he wants his mommy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm kidding, but that is kind of, you know. Yeah. I get I still get my eight hours of sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is the worst that is part, the worst part. part. Oh, I think sleep if you can get past the sleep deprivation. That's why young yeah. people yeah. are the only people that should have kids. Yeah. Because my, you can tolerate being young. I mean being tired and going to work and doing all those things. I remember with Calvin because we were both over forty at the time. Yeah. It was hard. Yeah. I mean the sleep, just not getting sleep. Whereas when you're twenty whatever, right. twenty eight, yeah, twenty nine, right. you can you can do it. You can bounce back a bit easier. Yeah. But I totally get it. Yeah. It's pretty cool, though. Very cool. It is cool. And um, Maddie and, like I said, Maddie and Luke just got married, so we're empty nesters now. Our dog, George, just turned a year old on Friday. George Porter's We here. bought the Furbo. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Have you tried this? Oh. No. Oh, my gosh. It is so cute. So it's a little machine. Okay. And you put treats in it. Okay. And, by the way, our neat treats will fit in it. Oh, that we okay. we here at All Star Vet. Okay. So maybe this needs to be a Richie review item. There you go. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's called the Furbo. Richie, oh, I'm obsessed. Like, I have to put my phone away because otherwise. Oh, because you can video and you can. I can uh, see him. So oh, okay. it'll say, like, it'll go. This is why staff needs to keep their phones in their locker because <laughs> it'll go bleep, bleep. And it'll make a little noise and you'll look at it and it says, your pet is missing you. Well, I've got to call him. So so I flip open. You open the app and um, you can talk to him. You can see him. Oh, wow. And then you go, sit, Georgie. And he sits and you push this little button and a treat comes out. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And then at the end of the day, in fast forward, it'll mm. show you their day. But it's all in, like, it's a, like a little clip, and they put it to music. 
Oh, weird. So it's their whole day, like what they did all day. So what? what's that? Review. Oh, he's chewing the carpet. Oh, that's you great. You know, but right. it'll show you all day, like what he did. It's that's nice. Oh, my it's gosh. So that's cute. insane. The it's connectivity so cute. you have today is just in, Our dogs in, would be like this. Laid out. No. Get up. <laughs> get up, lay back move, down. Get move up. to this pillow. Right. Mm-hmm. Move to, to that couch. <laughs> yeah. This pillow. Shift bound. Yeah. Well, he's just he's just one years old. So yeah, he's, he's boom, a boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. But oh, it's, it is, great. I'm telling you, it's a good one. It would be a good one for okay, you to cool. look at. Okay, cool. I'll have to remember that. Remember now, that, the Harry. neat treats, um, I cut mine in half, the ones right. that we have here. We, I use the smaller ones, and I cut them in half and put them in there. But Furbo has, like, treats that they sell. Right. Um, but they're not, they're more expensive. So, so it, um, oh, okay. So, yeah. can the dog call you? <laughs> that's good no <laughs> i want to treat my george, george, george i guess george. in a way in a, to block him in a way in a way he does because when he barks it engages with you and says your dog is missing you oh weird so, so you know what would happen in our house with the furbo it would get destroyed in one minute well they the would first find hour, to get that food they out would there. be like yeah, oh there's food in about it that. and once winnie knew there was food in there she would have that thing all over the house until she got the food out i do worry about that like how so, like is it indestructible Mm-hmm. I doubt it. Send you it. like messages. It. Mayday, mayday. Mayday, right. Come on, quick. Furbo is over, knocked over. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess you just have to put it where maybe they can't get to it. Right get now, mine's it. low. And so George will go, like, he, you can see him go up and, like, lick it. You oh, know, yeah, he's like, waiting for something yeah. to come out. Oh, oh my God. God. I, heard I should that. probably move it. To a, yeah. You, you've got to play with it. I it's think so that's fun. probably just the tip of the iceberg in terms of pet products that they'll have available in the future, whether it be – implants with biofeedback well there's already an implant Something, i think yeah. available it's like measures body temperature i feel like oh wow but i mean like a microchip thought... i think there's a microchip like a home again chip that actually tells you body temperature there's something like that now even but how would that be how disruptive would that be if you had some kind of biofeedback mechanism such that they could catch things or an algorithm that would alert you mm-hmm. You're on your phone something's wrong right. some of these numbers are off Right. Uh, they, because a lot of times, I mean, I've talked to Emily, you don't know anything's wrong until they present something. Mm-hmm. They're not feeling well, but if you can catch things, she's she's obviously clearly knows way more than I do about it and how that would have limited usefulness. But I could totally see something like that really hmm. disrupting the market going forward if they offer, you know. Well, they have out. with kiddos. When Jackson was born, they had these owl, owl, O-W-L, owl mm-hmm. slippers that go on the bottom of kiddos' feet. Now, I don't know much about these, but um, we didn't get them. But they um, kept track of your child's heartbeat. And so oh, if wow. your child stopped breathing oh. in the middle of the night, it would send an alert. Wow. So like if they have that like S- SIDS. SIDS, yeah. SIDS, yeah. Wow. Because well, I don't think they know exactly what causes SIDS yet, right? I don't think so, yeah. So then if your heart, so if they're, oh, fascinating. So your yeah. son had those? No, we didn't get them. We didn't get them. We read the reviews when they had mixed but they reviews. Had them. That, they that, have them. That's they old have tech them. then. Yeah, so it's, you know. Jackson's six months old, so when when she found out she was pregnant, she put him on the uh, the uh, list of things she wanted. Oh, so it's new. It's not it's Jack's, Jack, your son. No, not my Jackson. Okay, I'm Jack's. sorry. Okay, got it. Yes. See, his name yes. is Jack Son, so it's very ah, confusing. So. Very confusing. <laughs> so Jack is Richard Jackson Russell the fifth. Your son is? My son is Richard Jackson Russell the fifth. The fifth? The fifth. So wow. Jack Russell liked the dog. So junior high, rough years. Rough right. years. He got bullied a oh, lot. Oh, Jack Russell. Okay, yeah, like it. the okay. dog. Yeah. He got bullied a lot. Um, but then he just used it like Jack Russell. And they're like, like the dog. And they're like, yeah, don't forget my name. And they, people wouldn't. Right. So he's like, I'm doing politics now. Right. So, you right, know. right, right, right. But yeah, so my grandson is Richard Jackson Russell, the six. So what was the first Richard Jackson Russell? His name was Richie. Ah, sure yeah. was a great guy. Go Richie. Ahead. Yep. <laughs> Richie was the first. Um, when did he live? And then, uh, pardon? When did he live? What year? Like, what year was he alive? I mean, if he was the sixth generation, it's yeah. got to be 1800s at least. I don't know. I don't know that answer. And then Interesting. the second, was his name was Jack, um, mm-hmm. and that was Rick's grandpa. And so I remember him, and, and mm-hmm. Jack actually was around for a little bit. My Jack was around for a little bit of Jack's life. And then Rick's dad was Dick, mm-hmm. and then Rick, right? and then Jack, and then Jackson. That's so, cool. Richie. Jack. Jack. Dick. Dick. Rick. Rick. Jack. Jack. Jackson. Jackson. I mean, oh it was like, gosh. I know. My mother-in-law, I remember when Jackson was born, she's like, what are you going to name him? I'm like, Philip? I mean, of course it's going to have to be one of those names, you know. <laughs> right, Phillip, exactly. Joey. I mean, no. It's <laughs> Joey. Be, yeah. Joey. Everybody's expecting it. It is, so yeah. 
I mean, but, that's like a big tradition. Yeah. yeah, you're getting into like yeah, that's amazing. We tried to do that with Holden because Holden's Thomas Holden is his real name, legal name, and um, he's named after my grandfather, my dad's dad. And remember, we tried to do the second, and they wouldn't do it. No. Something kind of something they wouldn't do like. They said because you're a junior or something. It was something it? weird. I don't mm-hmm. know. They're like, we can't do that. And I was like, yeah, I think you probably can, but you're just not doing it. But anyway. What well, one time? Dick Russell and Rick Russell and Jack Russell, all three worked for the city of Noblesville at one time. Oh, weird. Because was Rick's dad a firefighter? He was um, the um, police chief in oh, okay. oh, wow. okay. Noblesville. I think so I remember he was the police that. chief yeah, in okay. Noblesville, and Rick was um, is a fireman. And then Jack was working at the um, mayor's office. So it was like they were all three at the city of Noblesville. So I'm, I felt bad for the people that worked there. I'm like, <laughs> they're never going to get this right. Right. Oh, never yeah. Get it right. Make like, sure they all I'm here to, to see doctors. Mr. Russell. Which one? Which, Which one? one? <laughs> so do they go back? So have the Russells been in Noblesville for since the first? So one? they started in Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's where they started. Um, but Maddie just went to Ireland um, for oh. her honeymoon, mm-hmm. and Richard Russell is like a huge. There's like a castle, a Richard Russell castle. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! Isn't that crazy? And there's this Russell um, armor, like. Pieces right. and it's like a big name in Ireland. That's very. That I bet funny? it'd be fascinating to go back and look at the history. I mean, of most Americans because we're all basically, you know, we're all immigrants yeah. and see where you came from in the grand scheme. Yeah. Of, you know, mostly Scotch Irish, like where I came, grew up in the South. I mean, almost all Scotch Irish down there, um, and you know, obviously Ireland, Scotland, England, you know, those areas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool to see your heritage and where you came from and. I thought I saw something the other day where some guy was like, he goes back. I don't remember what show it was, but he went back to Ireland or something, and he found his people were, you know, his extended family that didn't immigrate, you know, and he met with them and talked to them and all that stuff. I was like, it's so cool to see where your people actually came from and what must have possessed them to pick up everything and leave where they were. Yeah. That's that's one of the things that's always fascinating to me about um, the American experience is that how, I mean, you generally act in your own rational self-interest. So you're trying to make things better for yourself mm-hmm. with your things you do and what the circumstances must have been like back then to get them to pick up everything, leave everything they've ever known, probably with the chance they're probably never coming back. Right. And and do and, and make a new life for themselves. Kind of like, you know, your grandpa, your mom's dad uh, left Italy and never ba- he went back years and years and years later, but created a new life here as an immigrant. Um, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool, it is you know? cool. The courage it must have taken to do that, you know. Yeah, we have not since she got back. We have all talked about going back and trying to figure out, you know, are we related to sure. this it, person? Could there yeah. be, you know, some kind of? But we haven't, we haven't played with that yet. But that's cool. I uh, thought that was souvenirs. really neat. Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. It's super cool. Very it's neat. So, yeah. Yeah. Time goes it's by. Melting pot. What did you say? It's a melting pot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Everybody's everything. You're Italian, Irish. I'm under the crust of the earth where my people came from. <laughs> my people. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's too funny. So anything else we got today? Uh, no, I, I do have so. one. Our thing. producer left, so I don't know. We I, probably want to stretch this out a little bit. I, I do have one thing for you because you know, every podcast, so I've got you something to keep here on the podcast set me for Aww. future. Yes. Me. Yes. Okay. Aww, well, something, something. It's nothing exciting. It's something from home. But I'm always throwing barbs at you. So <laughs> I got you. Oh. I brought in your own shield. There you go. Oh, my God. And face mask. Face mask. Oh, okay. We got to go. try that on. Got so it. that as the barbs fly, you then, if anybody's watched these podcasts, Morgan. don't play with it. It's she probably me a flaw shield. I didn't it's buy it. I took, brought it from home. <laughs> I know. It doesn't work. Um, it, that looks like. He wants it sh- to work. <laughs> it does He's want like, it to work. He wants it to work. Um, and so, um, yeah, you know, anybody's... all the barbs are somewhat rooted in truth and come from a place of love. So it's okay. There you go. So when they start flying, you can just here's your mask. Dodge them. There's your mask. Take your mask. There you go. So then that way you can, uh, you know, <laughs> I almost yeah. got you Wonder Woman bands, but then I thought, mm, nah. uh, not really. Um, Wonder Woman. Yeah. So, so she is a badass, but <laughs> you do want that to work though. Does it have batteries? Um, it used to have a little thing here, and it's I only know this because I spent oh, okay. so much time with off children. So that you would sit here, and, and I think you would hold it like that. Yeah, and then you f- and you would you'd have a little disc here, and you'd jerk the disc, and, and it oh. flies off. Yeah, it's like a weapon, you know. Oh, cool! This broke, Shoot long, it this broke long ago. I'm it sure. was Johnny's, I think, and then oh. Calvin's played with it. They all play with that stuff outside and everywhere, and then it gets, it gets left wet outside. And all that crap. So yeah, that's cool. It's amazing what how how 
boy, at least my boys specifically, can destroy a in a, a day. A, a perfectly a good. Toy. I don't know. It's like certain kids can destroy. Like Jack always had toys that lasted forever, and then a certain friend of his would come over and like look at the toy and it would break. You know those <laughs> yeah. kids oh, yeah. that those people that yeah just like yes really. I think about things oh, though that yes. are inherent. It's so funny because now that I have my own sons and and I, I watch what they do and how some things are annoying, but then you look back and you go, there has to be something inherent in that behavior because that's the way that I acted. Yeah. Like you get a toy and you play with it and you kind of get bored with it and you take it apart and ruin it. <laughs> I mean, I did that with everything practically. And I think, you know, where that, whereas that could be seen as destructive behavior, you're really being inquisitive and saying, yeah. well, how does this work? Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, and how all the kids are, you know, they're not like that necessarily, but it just they're very similar in that regard. No, now the things they take apart are much more expensive. <laughs> like Calvin took apart the controller the other day. He goes, yes. can you help me put this back together? I was like, I have no idea where to oh even begin. Gosh. Yes. It didn't work. He goes, it didn't work. I was like, well, it sort of worked. Now it really doesn't work. So <laughs> it's in pieces. Thanks, bud. That was $60. <laughs> Do you have oh 60 gosh. bucks? Sure don't. Uh, like an gosh. Xbox controller yes. or something. Wow. Well, well, that's, see, that is kind of cool that he thought to take it apart, though. He wanted to something hydro dip something with the controller like where it would paint the one side of the controller oh. so you had to take it apart in order to have that piece free oh, so it. that then you can do this hydro dip thing of which we not do not have is that a youtube thing like did yeah yeah sure. lots of lots of uh there's lots so of much ideas are generated on youtube oh, oh yes. it looks so easy but it's kind of not yeah he learns a lot of his um like just like creative things like they learn so much it's crazy how much they learn on youtube i think yeah. youtube i have a very unique opinion about youtube i mean mostly in video content generation and consumption i think that's how kids are going to learn going forward and it won't be inside the four corners of a classroom mm -hmm. i think well, i still think they'll need four corners of a classroom i just think you'll they'll take opportunity they'll take advantage of you know because you can't you know it's expensive to buy like mm -hmm. all of these things or all of these things. So you can still have the opportunity. But I really think where it's going to be is VR. Well, but think about, yeah, but VR is just an extension. I think about like undergrad, for instance. I cannot remember a class outside of biology where I couldn't have watched the same thing on a video screen and, and gotten the same amount of, you know, learn the same amount, consume the content and, and gain that skill set. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I was a finance major undergrad. It's all just equations. So you're just, I'm not writing the equations on the board. They are. They're explaining it. I never really interacted with them unless I had a, a general question. And you could easily, even from a VR standpoint, not a VR really, but um, but if you're watching it and you can interact in real time with the professor, there's no different than that's. There's no difference between watching on a video screen versus watching it in the classroom and they're in front of the board. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think going forward, if you could higher reach, education, I think you mm -hmm. could. Well, I think they're already doing that with e-learning days. I mean, they're doing that where to a very limited extent. At, at the high school level where you I can think say the only purpose right Terry correct me if I'm wrong the only purpose of e-learning days is so that they don't have to miss the day yeah I we didn't have e-learning days when I was there and I I don't a hundred percent get them but you have to have 181 days in your right. calendar in right. to a certain hour like you couldn't I mean, you had to. That was all the snow days, and I, I, I don't really know much about the e-learning Yeah, days. so that see, was, then they don't new. have to. That doesn't count against you. No, but my point, though, is Yeah, it doesn't count against you. But, the, but, like, but I'm sure they can only have so many e-learning days. But the teachers, days, I but, think, still can meet. And that's the yeah. problem is, you know, these teachers now are putting in so much time um, that the, I think administration maybe is, I don't know, I'm totally guessing, but administration is trying to make it so that, you know, they can have meetings during, during the day during the day yeah, versus yeah. outside because they're all doing extracurricular they're doing so many extra things that they're living at the schools right so we I, did back then back then we lit we lived at the schools right back the only I reason thought. that i bring that up is i think is i mean 20 years ago if you said you had an online say college degree people would scoff at you mm -hmm. and think that you are an idiot what are you doing this is stupid I agree. now you see the big brick and mortars that produce i use they see what's coming they yeah. see that that eventually there's gonna to have to be a lower cost solution for higher education. So they're saying, okay, how can we implement this such that it has the same kind of, uh, what's the word, not cache is the wrong word, but the same credibility mm -hmm. as a traditional four year brick and mortar degree, but it's obtained online. And I think the more you see that, that, that will it undoubtedly have to have a trickle down effect into the public education system mm -hmm. because they'll be able to say, I can teach one teacher instead of teaching 30 can teach 300. I mean, and, and from a funding standpoint, if you could implement a system like that, where you're getting this, you're imparting the same knowledge, you're still imparting that skill set, yeah. but on a much grander scalable level, I think that's where, I don't see how it doesn't happen, especially no, we, as you see kids 
they watch videos, they learn all this stuff. Johnny's a good example. I mean, he, he watches videos. He'll come down and talk to me about stuff all the time that he learned on YouTube. Yeah. Then, the, only, I mean, the, the only disservice that is to a student is for the amazing teachers that are out there. If they're not in front of them, they don't yeah. see – no, I get that. That a child is sad or hungry or right. you can't see all those little things. And teachers aren't just educators. They are caregivers. 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 Yeah. And for, I just think that could get missed. I mean, just like a veterinarian medicine went towards um, yeah, if you're doing everything. just online, we would never build that sense of community. So I think, I, I, I think it's great for people that can't get to right. the classroom. But I remember as a student – back in the days, those teachers that noticed in me something that sure. was off and right. they would say something, you know, those special teachers. I mean, right. not all teachers are like that, but, you know, I, I had, I definitely had a handful of them. Um, and I definitely taught with a lot of teachers that sure. went above and beyond and, yeah. and they saw something that I didn't see, you know, somebody squinting. I'll never forget Amy Prather noticed somebody and, and Becky Mangan mm -hmm. um, noticing a child squinting and the parents never saw it. Right. Mm. But the teacher Holden. saw it. So it's Holden. little things like yeah. that that we don't, you don't think that, the, you know, but the teachers are see your kids more right. than you do. So those little itty bitty things that make them caregivers, not just educators. So those get those kind of things get lost with all this, you know, technology. Yeah, I, don't technology. Even, I don't know how, and I've thought about that too. How do you maintain how do you maintain the delivery of the content, but this, the control and the interaction that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how they could ever really do that unless it was a compliment. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was 20, 25% right. of video content, but the other 75, you know what I mean? Right. Um, that, that, if I had to guess, it would be something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. something where it was, it was an added bonus, but it wasn't the predominant way that they interacted with, with the students. Yeah. I don't see that working with little kids because little kids nah, still need like that pat on the shoulder. You know, some of them don't like to be touched either, right. but some of them want a pat on the shoulder or they, they need a hug. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, those awesome teachers can see those kind of things. And I think that could get missed. I think it does get missed sure. because I do think we have too much of that going on. So, right. um, but they're still amazing, awesome teachers out there that are catching it. So absolutely. Seeing it. I've had them too. Yeah. Ones that make a difference. That's for oh, sure. Yeah, Dad, well. Dad, Eli is watching and he said, Tiffany wants to know what Richie's favorite Hallmark movie he watched over the holidays. Yeah. Very Merry Christmas. A very Merry Christmas. A very, a, a very Merry no, Mix Up. A very Merry Mix Up. They're what all dumb. It? it doesn't matter. I get it. They're all stupid. They're all the same Aww. plot. But they're but they're fun. They're fun to watch. Uh, let's see. Um I, I have the classics I still like. I still like A Christmas Story. I like uh, Christmas Vacation. Um, those are mainstays. And the Hallmark movies are just fillers to mm -hmm. see what you dig. I mean, and they're all um, – hats off to Hallmark, though, because they have created a brand and a niche yep. mm -hmm. that no one would have ever, ever thought ever five or six years of. ago. Yeah. Yeah. They were an afterthought years ago. And, in fact, I've, I listened to a podcast where the guy talked about how they produce these holiday movies. And – they produce them quickly and cheaply mm -hmm. and they'll use kind of B talent, you know, to come in and they'll shoot them over the course of two or three weeks and pay people per diems and all that stuff. But they're, they're generally shot pretty well. The stories are fairly simple and, uh, and they're doing just fine. I'm sure Hallmark is as yeah. a, uh, they have the a app this year. They have the mm -hmm. app where you can, which is cool. Cause I could yeah. see, cause I mean, otherwise yeah. you have to go try and find and you put reminders and then the day before where it's like, Hey, this thing's coming on. <laughs> Well, you'll, it's an obscure one if you want to watch it. And it's funny. This I year was the an first alarm year. I for 11, 12, and 3. But I just tape it. I go tape it. Oh, my gosh. It's so funny. <laughs> so we would go. And it's funny, though. Now, this is probably the first year, though, I think we would sit downstairs. And I would try and watch it. And we'd get maybe 20 minutes. And I was like, I can't watch the no, rest of this. No, what we did this year was we go, we tried to say what the plot was going to be. Oh, right, right, right. We figured figure it so out. We she's going to yeah. fall in love with him. So we said, she's going to fall in love with him before it ever starts. We're like, all right. She has, um, her father's died. Her mother is like, you know, you come up with the whole plot. You try and guess the whole plot. And then sometimes we'd be right. Sometimes we'd it be always right. makes me laugh because there's this one with Lacey Chabert where she's engaged to this guy. She meets her assist, something like within the course of 36 to 48 hours, she falls in love with this, with this other guy. Like, you must not like that guy very much, huh? <laughs> 48 hours. OK. Uh, That's a Hallmark God. one. That's a Hallmark yeah. movie. Yeah. So, and there's always a Santa Claus there that has some magic, twitches his nose, does something. To, I do that same thing at Starbucks, though. Like. If I'm like people watching, I'm like, hmm, what's the story? What's the story? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought absolutely. about it. It's so funny you mentioned that because yeah. we were at, um, we were at BW3s this weekend grabbing a bite to eat real quick, and 
I was, we were in the bar area and I was looking across the way and I saw a young fella and a girl, she was drinking water, he was drinking beer and they were, they looked like college students because we were in Tennessee. And um, it was so funny because like, you could watch the interaction because I was seated that way. I just kind of was, you know, watching. Staring at them. Yeah, <laughs> stalking. And um, you Pretty could much. see like, you know, they talked, they didn't get anything to eat really. They were just talking and stuff. And the guy brought the check and put it next to the girl, but then the dude grabbed over this dance that goes on. It's oh, so yeah. funny to see that. Yeah. See, you know, it yeah, still goes watching. on. Yeah. yeah. And you can predict, I guess, Great the point. Yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can see based upon your own life experience and expectations what's happening or whatever yeah. same thing with people watching i'm sure yeah. yeah you look at that person and go you make certain assumptions based upon yeah what things, you're seeing so. it's cool it's funny it's funny well well thanks for including me today we're so happy that you joined us today yes absolutely I thanks so much i yes. know that i wasn't giving any notice and that's why my hair looks so good <laughs> <laughs> your hair does look it, good it looks so good today it's so cute you, your hair looks good it, no matter how I know, it always so looks good, good. It it always so looks good. no but in all honesty thanks for joining us and coming oh, yeah, in and talk about fun. how we roll if this is how we roll if somebody wants to reach you yes you know, to find out more about the program or the different parts of the program, how do they do that? They do that by emailing me at education at all-starvet.com. So, Harry, maybe we can include that on the Facebook post um, um, so well, everybody can see that yeah. and check it out. And um, we're here every Monday is around 1030. And we're, we're going to bring you guys back closer to summer yeah. when we get – so then we can do a little pitch about the camps, hopefully, it's with great. summer. Super, so, um, super excited. We'll bring you back on the podcast then so we can kind of update everybody and let everybody know where we're at in, in regards to that. But otherwise, check out – we're also going to be putting the education program on the website, right, Harry? So that will be another resource for people to find information out as awesome. well. But um, all right. Well, I hope uh, everybody has a great Monday. Happy Martin Happy Luther Monday. King Day. Happy you know. Monday. Happy everybody yeah so okay. that's going down so awesome. all you students at home yeah watching the podcast mm -hmm. <laughs> lots <laughs> of you <laughs> lots sure of you are. out there um the all right so growing. yeah you want to are you doing the rap is there a sing song that we sing out we need to sing a song terry is going One, to create two, a jingle three. No, <laughs> it's good to see you thank you for no thanks everybody for watching um have a great week and that's it we'll see you next time on five boys and Miss. don't forget to check out asvcmerch.com We've got some cool hats now that it's finally winter. Now that it's, it's buff, buff, freezing. It's freezing. And our long sleeve t-shirt. T-shirt. Respect your noggin. Put a hat on it. Uh -huh. Put a hat on it. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Five boys in a business. I'm we Dr. are out. King and. Richie King. And. Terry Russell. And we'll see you next time. We're out.